Hey everyone, welcome back to Creating Appealing Characters. This is week six, and this week we're going to talk about hair, clothing, and accessories, and any kind of miscellaneous extra pieces that are going to need to go into our character. So this is all important stuff that tells us a lot about our character. Obviously hair is a big part of design for most of us, and uh, clothing and accessories, once we put them in this week, are going to help us resolve proportional issues we might still be having and you know also those kinds of things just help to make the model feel more interesting uh, you know in addition to being a necessary part of the design so previously the last time we checked in we had sculpted our body out and then in between then and now we've made a face and hands so our body nude is completely done at this point and we're ready to start accessorizing and doing all the fun fashion stuff that we've been thirsting for since day one of this class. So this week we're going to start with hair. Hair is going to be an important part of your character's silhouette, so it's something we're going to want to put a lot of time and attention into. And there's a lot of different ways to make hair. We're going to kind of do a cross between modeling and sculpting in this class anyway. It's just my personal method that I like to go, but we're going to discuss a couple other ways to do it, and then, you know, obviously anything that gets the job done is the best way to go. So, you know, kind of keep in mind that for the purpose of this class, this is going to be kind of for, you know, the goal is ultimate art director approval or something. So we're not going to be spending time doing like sims on hair or anything like that. Uh, anything that's just going to be too time intensive and take away from getting across the the look and feel of our character. So here is my concept that I'm working off of and just taking a look at the hair here. You know, there's a, a lot of cheating going on in this drawing, um, so I didn't really do myself any favors there. But, uh, you know, so cue off of the concept that you're working from, obviously, first and foremost for how to approach the hair. Uh, it won't be all of the information that you need, though, I guarantee it, unless your character is totally bald. Um, so the first thing that I do in all cases, I'm sure you can already guess, is gather reference. Uh, you may think that you know how your hair should look, um, but you probably don't. So it's, it's always going to help to gather as much reference for the particular hairstyle that you are going for. So I did. I went and I grabbed a bunch of different similar hairstyles to what I'm making with my character here. And, you know, none of these are particularly perfect. Like, none of them are the exact hairstyle that I'm after. But I can kind of glean all of the information that I need from all of these different hairstyles. And I think I can pull enough information together here to get a convincing look to my hair sculpt. One last note about hair before we jump in and start our block out is uh, it's a good idea to actually think about how you might want to section out your hair as you're going. So here I've got two drawings. Um, if we take a look at the guy on the left here, how would I actually approach building this guy's hair? So I would probably think about it in three different sections. There's the red and the blue, which are kind of both sides of the part in his hair, and then this green section that wraps around the back of his head and is kind of, you know, probably going to be actually symmetrical, whereas the other two parts don't or won't be symmetrical. And the green doesn't necessarily have to be, but you could probably get away with it. And then over there on the right, same type of thing going. She's sort of got this big Elsa bang thing going on, so I've, you know, kind of sectioned that off as its own piece. And then there's this uh, other hair on the side in the yellow. And then the whole back of the hair, I think, would probably be its own section, too. So, you know, it's not necessary to do a drawover like this for your character, but it is sometimes helpful to think about how you might want to break up your hair proxy. We're going to sculpt out a proxy volume to sort of help inform our final hair sculpt. So, you know, sometimes it's useful to have that split up into a couple different pieces so that you can sculpt, especially if you have a character with a strong part or with a, a character that has kind of complex multi-piece hair. So think about that before we jump in. And then uh, 
an extra treat this week is I've discovered how to use transitions in my keynote. So here we go. Let's go into ZBrush. All right. Here we go in ZBrush now. I've got my head sculpt. I'm going to hide the rest of the body for now because we're just going to focus on the head and hair. So I might as well load up my spotlight here. There we go. And just take a look here at what we've got. So I think based on my reference images that I have up on a second monitor here, I'm going to start kind of carving in areas that I want to section out for this hair. So for example, I would probably divide be some kind of a part line in here like that. So maybe this is a part that would uh, go back to some point. Just build up both sides of that. And then I think I'll just use my clay brush on a low setting to sort of help myself, sort of help me figure out the overall directionality of this hair. So all this stuff is going to be coming down and around and kind of curling back up, something like that. So a clay brush is always good for this part because I'm trying to just build up volume and control volume in some way. I don't know the exact shape of that, but just getting some kind of a general volume in there is good for now. And uh, this is still a Dynamesh object, so I'm going to go in to my Dynamesh here, and since I am playing with volume still, I can uh, just quickly hit the Dynamesh on that. So I'm partially, so I'm partially trying to figure out the directionality of this hair and the flow of it, and then partially trying to get the volume of it to feel right too. So mostly, I'll spend some time working on just the general shape and uh, silhouette of the hair, and then I can start sculpting in more detail. Very easy to cheat hairstyles when you're only doing a drawing or uh, when you're just doing a drawing from one angle like I have done. You now it's possible that maybe the drawing wasn't fully researched uh, to quite the extent that it should have been, but that's why we're doing it right now. All right, anyway, I don't want to go too crazy on these sculpts uh, for the hair right now, because like I said, we're just trying to figure out volume and directionality. Just get the general hair working. All right. So, it's another opportunity to get a part going in that hair. So that just might be one long section right there. So the way I'm thinking about that is, you know, obviously all this hair here that kind of poofs up over her forehead is running straight back along there. We've got this part over here, just kind of a swoop to it, and then it goes straight back and down into her little roll on the back there. And then over here, we've got the same type of thing, but just on the other side. So it's kind of three chunks of hair that are going to meet up somewhere back here. Yeah, I guess we could do maybe something like that, just as my divisions, and then pinch that back together. I don't always divide up hair, but I think um, it might be a good... It might be a good exercise for this week. Just pinch that stuff together again. I don't want it to actually be a part. 
I just want it to separate for me, which will make using hair tubes on it much easier. Let's get this a little bit more square from the back. And then I just want to check some volumes as I move around, check some silhouette angles. Good opportunity to plus that silhouette with your hair if you can. All right, silhouette seems pretty good for the most part. Now I just want to get some of these interior details maybe a little bit better. I'm going to increase my resolution. And I'll just use this to kind of sculpt out some of the major features, the sort of hero strands of the hair. And, uh, you know, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. There's definitely cleaner ways, I'm sure. There's a better approach. There's always a better approach. But uh, i treating this as kind of a sketch, kind of a sketch for my overall volume. And then uh, being able to get some of this detail in here is nice because it's going to inform my hair tube shapes that I'm going to sculpt later. I'd like to get some of this breakup at the hairline so it doesn't just feel like a total helmet. But I'm not going to go too crazy on that just because all this detail will be thrown away. It's feeling a little poopy overall but maybe I kind of like it very big so I'll try to make the asymmetry of the hair kind of interesting let's see if I can get some of this silhouette that's happening over here because it's so prominent on the design that it, and it I kind of like the way that it makes it look but it's tough because that's kind of a very cheating angle that you wouldn't really be able to see that hair on the side of her head. But we can make it so that as you rotate around, you start to see a little bit more of that. If I start this part line up higher, kind of helps. Try going super straight with that. Yeah, that's kind of working. I'm just going to push everything up to help maintain her huge forehead. Something like that. I think that that is more than enough to get started now on the uh, final hair. I'm just going to put a couple of indicative lines here in the back of how I kind of want this directionality to go. I'm using the orb crack brush to just ruthlessly dig into this hair piece. The orb crack brush is great because it's got no roots at all. Do you absolutely need to make a line in something right now? Orb crack brush. And it makes great cracks in any kind of orb that you have. Should have been using this the whole time. It's great. All right. So that's my sculpted out hair for now. I'm not going to take this any further. And I'm going to go in now and divide it up into pieces, which will make uh, applying my hair tubes a little bit easier. So there we go. I'm going to do that part now. So now I'm going to divide up my hair into two, maybe three pieces, um, just so that I can easier apply my hair tubes when I get to that point. So let's just try and see what we get when I do that. So I'm going to mask off part of this hair. Just go in a broad sweep here. See how well that works for us. Okay, so maybe something like that. Actually, I'm going to carry this all the way down through so that we get that. And I'm going to polygroup that. So now we have an extra polygroup in here. 
I'm going to try this method over here now to get this little round bun thing. Basically anywhere where this hair is going to become a uh, separate part or like a divided up Mask off polygroup, see what that gives me. I think that's going to be fine. So now, what I'm going to do, I've got uh, all of these different pieces. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is go in and go into my geometry. I'm going to dynamesh these pieces together. I'm going to change my resolution down just a little bit. And then Dynamesh all this stuff together with groups on. Let's just see what happens. And all right, so we get one object here. It's totally separated out. The only thing, again, that I really care about is this part line. We get this object here also separated out. Just chunkified. And we get this sort of bun shape. And I'm going to use these as just really rough objects that I can apply my hair tubes to that uh, hopefully will help with the wrapping as we get down into these ditches and crevices and stuff. It should be a little bit easier to apply. So I'm just going to fill color into all of these things. And uh, now I've got my hair. So I'm going to break this up now into three different objects. So I'm going to go ahead and do a split, split to parts. So now I've got one piece of hair, second piece of hair, that roll in the back, and then another piece divided along this part line here. And I can kind of re-sculpt that to get it a little bit more curvy if I wanted to. But that should be uh, good enough for what I'm going to do for this. So let's uh, go ahead and start applying hair tubes now. And we're back from ZBrush. We've got our hair blocked in. It's looking fantastic. So um, now it's time to finish that hair. And uh, there's a couple different ways that I like to think about doing hair in 3D. And that's modeled hair versus sculpted hair. And what I mean is modeled hair is usually going to be something that's kind of segmented, like these two uh, examples I have on the left here. Segmented out, the hair kind of feels like a lot of different pieces. Um, in, in 3D, that translates into the same thing, a lot of different pieces. But you can get away also with using a low polygon mesh to, that would then smooth at render time to give you a lot more you know, detailed looking information. Um, there's some advantages to going this way, and it's the way that I prefer to use. Um, but, you know, depending on the style of your character, it might be more pertinent to go uh, towards a sculpted looking hair like the one on the right. It's usually going to be one big volume or, you know, it doesn't ha it's not broken up into the same amount of striations and uh, parts that a modeled hair would. And, uh, you know, you could always do some variation of the two. Uh, as well. So it really depends on your character type, but it is something to think about. You can see that the look that you get between these two different kinds of hair is very different. So keep that in mind and choose whatever works best for you. So the method that I'm going to use is with a hairbrush that I made. Um, it's an insert multi mesh brush for ZBrush, and you can get it for free if you do decide to use it. Uh, you are welcome, of course, to use any method that you want, but just in case you want to know what I'm using while I'm making my hair, it's going to be this brush, the DE Hair Tubes brush. It's a free download on Gumroad, and it'll always be free, so go ahead and grab it. And, uh, you know, just play with it. It might not be for you, but a lot of people have been using it. It's got over 3,000 downloads, and I see it pop up all the time on ArtStation and places like that. So some people are using it and liking it, so it must not be complete garbage. Um, but yeah, check it out, and hopefully my demo here will persuade you to start using it in your own workflow. Awesome ZBrush transition again. Here we go. All right, let's start putting hair tubes in. 
And uh, as in all things, this is just the way that I like to work. I think that this gives a nice look to um, the hair, something kind of sculptural. So I'm, I'm going to use this brush called the DE Hair Tubes brush, which you can get for free on Gumroad. And uh, that is just my brush that I use to uh, add hair to all of my sculpts. I use this at work and on my personal projects. So uh, have at it. A lot of people are using it here and there for different things. And I think it's really uh, gives a nice look. So here's why we have broken up this hair. So uh, you can see now if I want to get some hair that kind of comes up over this part line, it's easy to do now that this is sectioned out. So if I had to try to account for that part line there, uh, the way that these IMM brushes work is by adhering to the surface um, of the object. So by doing that, I can get, you know, some nice fold over of that part line and uh, it'll, it'll kind of follow along. So let's go over these brushes just real quick. If you do choose to use them, uh, so load up the brush and then if you press M, you get all of these different brush options. And these are all of the different hair profiles that I've got in here. So like, for example, if I just choose the thick A and then draw that onto the character, it's going to draw thick A out. Now with that curve still live, I can actually change the brush type by pressing M, choosing a new brush, and then clicking that curve, and it's going to change that brush. I can also do the same if I change my size and click on that curve again. It'll update the size of the tube that's been drawn out. So um, you'll notice that it's kind of drawing in reverse right now. So what I want to do is go into my stroke palette, go down to curve, uh, curve modifiers. You've got the curve fall off. If I just flip this and then maybe give it a little bit of a more interesting shape, it will now draw thick to thin and uh, pretty much exactly what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. Uh, I don't want that particular curve, so I'm going to alt click and drag through it to get rid of it. And uh, I'm going to start blocking out some hair on here now. So one other thing to note is that under your brush settings, you've got a depth slider. So if I don't want to add a lot of volume, I'm just going to lower that depth slider down so that when I draw my hair curves onto here, I'm not getting um, a lot of extra thickness. So that is something that you might need to adjust on a per curve basis. So if I go to my thick tubes here, and then uh, change my brush depth and then tap that again. It's going to recess that tube into the surface. So maybe I just want it recessed a little bit. And then I can just kind of drag these into place like that. So I'm going to go ahead and place some more of these curves. So just getting these into place for the most part. And then you can use the move brush on a large setting to adjust the relative size and shape of everything. I'm going to change that background object color just so it's not so distracting. So I can tell which curves I've drawn out and which ones I have uh, are the are my sketch object. So I might use like these thin curves or tubes, I should say, to sort of add accent. Here and there or to make it feel as though some of these tubes are broken up a little bit more. So I'm going to complete one little section of this and then show you 
what the goal is uh, using these tubes. All right, so let's just see where this gets me. I'm going to auto group everything so that all of my hair curves are in separate, or my hair tubes are in separate poly groups. I'm going to hide the sketch and split it off. So I still have it in there, but it's hidden right now. Turn off poly groups and just hit D for a quick divide. Now I've got a lot of low res tubes that when subdivided like they are, uh, hopefully will give me this nice, you know, clean look to the hair. Now it's hidden. Oh, okay, I see. So I'm going to split hidden again and hit divide just to preview that. Change that color to something else. So you can see what that's kind of doing. Uh, still a lot of work needed, but luckily it's very low res, which is kind of the benefit, kind of the goal here. And I can just kind of push it around with my move brush very easily. So one of the benefits of the multi-tube or the multi-curve tube is that it breaks up into a lot of pieces, which can then be further distributed to give a little bit more of an uneven look to the hair, a little bit more natural maybe. So I'll switch my move brush to topological. And just kind of pick and choose some pieces and move them around. Yeah, so that's starting to feel a little bit like hair. Still feels a little bit mechanical. It's going to take some moving things around and evening things out to uh, really start to look good. But I think it's on the way. So make sure to compare often with your old hair sculpt, just to make sure that you're still on model. And then we'll keep going. I'm not super happy with this multi-curve that I added, so I'm gonna delete it. Just go in to all the pieces and take it out. Do a delete hidden. I'll bring back my proxy here. Go back to work on that one. Really want to get the character of that swoop feeling right. I'm going to split that off, fill it, do a divide on that. It feels a little nicer than what I had in there before. I 
and then fix. So move around and make your adjustments wherever needed. Maybe hide this sketch so I can see what's going on. And that's pretty much it. I just start to move stuff around until I like the way that the pieces are overlapping. Until they feel good. And then I would suggest getting these all part of the same subtool pretty soon. Just so we're not having too many different subtools that are all the same color floating around. Can make it difficult. And then uh, you see how squared off these ends are? I might try to like bring several different hair tubes together. So that they make a nice point. And then you can go in. Whoops, don't dynamesh it. Make sure you turn off dynamesh. You can go in and mask off that point at the end. Just scale that real tight. And that's it. So now I'll just go around and do that to the rest of the hair here. It's going to be kind of a time-consuming process, depending on how much hair your character has. So, you know, maybe some parts of your hair might be a sculpt, where you just kind of keep going with your Dynamesh uh, and Z-Remesh hair, or however you did it. And then uh, maybe some parts that need a little bit more detail or a little bit more control and separation could be hair tubes. The world is your burrito. So I hope it's tasty. All right, so we're gonna jump ahead to a more completed version of this hair now. All right, so skipping ahead here, we've blocked in a little bit more of the hair just using my underlying sculpt as a guideline. You can see that there's still quite a few areas here that we need to keep working on. So I'm gonna keep doing that. All right, so now we've got all of the hair blocked in and ready for a little bit of finesse and sculpt to go in and break up some of these areas where uh, things are starting to IP a lot and uh, look kind of messy. For the most part, I think it looks pretty good, but uh, I'm just going to go in and clean up a couple areas, maybe uh, add a couple little extra details and things like that, and then I'm done with my hair. And uh, at the end of the day, we've got hair that's fairly low res. It's uh, very easy to re-sculpt and move this stuff around. We can use our Z modeling tools and things on it. Uh, and even if we wanted to, at this point, we could also go ahead and uh, you know combine all this stuff together. Dynamesh it or whatever to get a, a useful sculpting mesh to start from uh, If we wanted to go in and actually do some more sculpting on this hair, too So I find the this method of making hair to be very versatile and useful and I think that it looks pretty good It's you know, it doesn't look like just a big mass sitting on top of the head and we get like a nice sculptural quality to it So uh, that's it for the hair, you know, I'm just gonna keep kind of tweaking and refining things um, this week and next week on the hair and let's uh, move on to some clothing and stuff. Wow, what an incredible time we had sculpting that hair. So everything is looking just amazing. Now let's move on to clothing and costuming. So clothing, obviously that's a huge important part of how your character looks. If your costuming is bad, it's going to be noticed. Uh, to avoid this, always default to the simplest, most direct way of making stuff, and I'm deadly serious about that. Uh, build everything exactly, not exactly, but build everything the way that it would be constructed normally. So, you know, we want to make sure that if we're making clothing, that it's, you know, there's a reason that clothing is made using a pattern like this. Um, you know, there's a there's a specific way that these pieces are assembled to get a look. And so when you're modeling something, 
try to keep that stuff in mind. So just taking clothing as an example, you know, I would always keep in mind where my seams are going to be and make sure that, you know, my arms are socketing into the seams where they should. And, uh, you know, keep in mind, like, the seams that might be running down the inside of the arm, the inside of the leg, stuff like that. So I always try to build my clothing as low res and as close to the actual real life, um, you know, object as it can possibly be. And that goes for all accessories. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. I'm, I'm just going to show you a way now that you can quickly and fairly easily generate clothing right off of your character's body in ZBrush using the topology brush. So let's head back over to ZBrush. Ever get sick of that transition? So now it's time to make a shirt, uh, make some clothing for this character in general. So I'm going to show you a way that I like to use ZBrush to do that. Um, and it's a pretty quick way as long as you can kind of get a handle on uh, the weirdness of this tool. But I like to use a tool called the topology brush. Um, but first things first, we've got a body mesh here with a lot of subdivision levels on it. I'm just going to go down to maybe like a lower subdivision level, but not all the way low, not all the way high either. Somewhere in between. And then what I'm going to do is uh, let's make a shirt for this character. So I'm going to delete lower, delete higher. Actually, before I do that, duplicate this off. We don't want to ruin our old body mesh. And we're just going to call this uh, trash for now. And uh, we're going to delete lower, delete higher. And then we're going to go in and just cut off all of the pieces of this that we don't need to see just to make it easier for ourselves. So we'll just cut all of that stuff off. I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete hidden. All right, so now we've got a mannequin basically that we can generate a mesh on top of. Uh, so go to your brush palette and then T and then O for topology. So uh, the way that this brush works is you're going to draw out a line on your mesh. And then anytime that you connect four of these lines together and you get a little green indicator on the corner of those intersections, it's going to generate a quad, a polygon for you. So um, that's the basic functionality of this brush. So the idea is that we're going to go in and draw out the quads that are going to make up the shirt and then uh, turn it into a usable mesh. Uh, the drawbacks of this tool is that it can be very finicky about making connections, which I'm sure you'll see while I demo this. And uh, also we can't edit these points once they're already put on here. You'll notice that if you go in to move stuff around, it uh, just draws another line. So a uh, quick couple notes that will be handy if you choose to use this method. Um, anytime that you've got these stray extra lines that aren't connected to anything, you can alt click through those lines with another line to delete them, just like that. Or uh, you can just alt click off in space over here away from everything else to let go. Uh, if you let go then you will clear out all of the extra lines that are in the whole mesh. So we'll just go ahead and clean up everything that we've made so far. And uh, let's get started on making a shirt. So the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, try to figure out where the major landmarks, just like when we sculpt the body, the major landmarks of our shirt. So we'll just go for like a simple t-shirt or something just so I can show you the basics of the tool. So the first thing that I'll usually do is sculpt like a ring around the t-shirt. Okay. So just go ahead and start getting your quads in there. All right, so we can clean that up now. So now we've got a ring around where the neck's going to go. And the next thing that I'll do maybe is draw in a ring where the sleeve will connect. Uh, 
I can go pretty rough with these shapes right now because they're going to turn into a mesh that I can edit a little easier later. So anytime that I need to just make a connection, um, I'll just kind of draw whatever I need to to make these rings happen. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with simple retopology type tools, and that's exactly what this is, basically. So now I can start connecting stuff. All right, so every um, time that we're doing any modeling like this, right, there's always going to be a ch at some point there's going to be a change of direction that's indicated by a star. So I like to think about where those stars are going to go. So for example, I might have a star right here where that sleeve goes from a tube up the arm to this chest piece, and then it's going to transition into the tube of that neck too. So place your stars with uh, with purpose and they will be more useful to you. I also am kind of just weird about having uh, multiples of four. So, you know, I've got a star on this span right here, then one, two, three, four spans. So this is where I kind of want my next star to go. It's right there. That just makes it easy to count stuff later. So now I've got, so here's a good example of where this didn't create a connection point. So I'll just delete that line and redraw this through here. And it went ahead and connected that time. There we go. So fixing stuff is a very real part of this tool. So I've got four spans. Now I'll get another star going across. Just keep this going. So here's my star. One, two, three, four spans. There's my next star. I can just connect it straight up into these already existing spans. Nice. Let's draw this line down the back. Hopefully it'll connect all those things. Great. And now I've got this weird gap thing that I need to fill in. Like that. Cool. So now I've got quads going all the way around the torso for the most part. I guess we don't have anything here in the front. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Just pull these across. Hopefully they will make a quad. Yes. So this can be a finicky tool. It's working pretty well for me right now, but um, you know, I'm sure if you choose to go this route, you might have some issues with it. Um, the most, the thing to kind of keep in mind, I think, is that you can at any time, uh, you know, once you have your basic, I've got all my stars in here. There's no more areas where there will be change of direction. So I need to extend this sleeve down, and I need to extend this part of the body down here too, but Instead of spending a bunch of time trying to kind of tediously do that in the topology tool, I want to speed up my workflow a little bit by going ahead and turning this into a mesh and then uh, using Zmodeler or something like that to add spans instead. So I'm going to change my brush size to 1 and then just click off on the mesh here. And that's going to generate a, uh, a new mesh based on all of those spans that I've placed. By hand. So now I've got the rough shape of a t-shirt in here. And it's pretty rough. It needs to be kind of sculpted out a little bit and smoothed out. If, uh, if it's a tight-fitting piece of clothing or something like that, you can always project this now onto your model. Uh, but let's just kind of pull this around until it's working. Let's even some of these spans out a little bit. Pull out this... Uh, chest and pull this down here on the back all right so you know i just i do bare minimum using the topology brush and then i can go in and easily add some spans now by uh, using the z modeler so i'll hit b uh, b z m for z modeler and then i'll just go ahead and uh, 
insert some edge loops here. Oh, it's not working. Why aren't you working? Oh, okay. So yeah, Z-Modeler won't work if something is hidden. So uh, I don't need this body mesh right now. So I'm going to go ahead and split um, that, that shirt off. And then pull it out so I can see what's going on. Switch back to my Z modeler and add some spans going up and down the back here. So we can get some extra resolution. Add some spans here on the bottom of the shirt. So now I can pull this down quite a bit. Fill in whatever space I need to. Smooth. And then back to Z Modeler to add extra spans to get my resolution back. Okay, smooth all that out. I can do that same exact thing on the sleeves. Let's keep the sleeves short for now, though. I think you get the picture. And then I just kind of use Move to push these spans around and get them spaced out the way that I want. So we get some good resolution here. You know, and this is all built pretty much exactly the way that a real t-shirt would be built. So I can, you know, faithfully place a seam up and down this span right here if I needed to. There's a seam where that sleeve connects that runs all the way around. You know, t-shirt's probably the most simple example. If your character's got like a suit jacket or something like that, it gets a little bit more complex with a collar and things like that. But just keep things as simple as you can as you're sculpting these clothes. You'll be in a pretty good spot. So I like to, uh, just as I'm cleaning this up, I'll push it around and kind of use transparency and stuff to get things close. You're basically just lining the spans up where you want them to go. And then uh, if you want to, if you wanted to get this to be a little bit more form-fitting, I'll just go in and do a project. So I'll turn my blur down, project all, and then just with the move brush, pull that stuff out so it no longer IPs the body like that. You see it's very low res, so we're getting a lot of areas that overlap quite a bit. Project all again. Turn off that ghost mode so you can see what's happening. And then I just pull stuff out, smooth it out a little bit. And now when I press D, it's uh, I'll change the color of that real quick. Whoops. That is a vibrant red shirt. So just to see uh, the smooth mesh preview on there, we're getting a shirt going. So now it's, you know, it's at a point now where it's pretty much ready to add detail. There's a crease going up and down the middle there. That's from the topology brush. Whenever two halves come together, it'll add a crease. We don't really want that. So I'm going to go ahead and go into crease, hit uncrease all. And there's our uh, beginnings of our shirt, kind of a tank top type of shirt thing going on here. But, uh, you know, from here, it's really easy to pose this now because it's one sided and the flow of it is very similar to what the body's doing. And then uh, later on down the line, when it's time to kind of finalize these objects, I can go in and, you know, using Z modeler again, I can like add a span for the collar there, you know, kind of do something like this or whatever um, to start getting that extra detail in there of the stitch lines and collars and overlaps and things like that. So when I subdivide now, you know, I'm starting to get, change that color is obnoxious. So now when I subdivide, you know, I'm starting to get a look um, 
like it's a real object. Okay, so that's kind of the, the basics of creating clothing in ZBrush. There's lots of ways to do it, but I think that this is a good method. It's pretty quick once you get the hang of the topology brush, and it makes it easy to build things out the way that it would normally be built. All right, so here's where I'm at uh, with all the characters' clothing. Um, so I found some boots that I had made, but these are made just the same way. I just kind of created them using ZModeler and then went into uh, Moto and built a sole out for the boots. So these boots I just kind of roughed into place. They need a lot of shaping, um, but they are pretty much ready to go. Let's go back up to our body here. So yeah, here's a, just a look at, you know, I built all these clothes the exact same way and just kind of place them in the scene. They're not finessed in any way, but they are ready to go. They could be posed and finished out later. Um, you know, this shirt is going to button in the middle so it doesn't close just yet. When I'm ready to fi uh, finalize this shirt, I'll just kind of pull this over, you know, however it should go so that there's an overlap there. And then I've built this button that I can duplicate and move all over. Same with these shorts. Uh, I've, you know, kept them very, very low and just blocked in the pieces that need to be there. And then uh, when the time comes, I can thicken this stuff up and add detail, uh, which will be the next step. But uh, this is kind of the goal for this week, is getting to this level. So I just have a quick note on accessories for this week. If you are completely up to speed and capable with ZBrush's modeling tools, uh, i.e. the Z modeler brush, then uh, by all means, you can go ahead and use that for this week. But I would highly recommend modeling all of your character's accessories and any kind of complex objects or complex clothing in a separate modeling package. And that's because you're going to find that the familiarity of using a package like Maya or Moto or something like that will probably be a little bit quicker, a little bit more robust in the tool set. And uh, hopefully, you know, you'd be able to get through modeling out all the stuff that your character needs. Uh, a little quicker with uh, less less issues because um, ZBrush's modeling tools are pretty good, but I feel like they're still a little ways off from being completely useful um, to me anyway. So, you know, however you feel about it, of course, but, you know, try to keep in mind how much time you have left. And uh, let's keep going on these characters. Okay, now that we've done all the work, or I've done all the work, let's talk about your homework. So your homework for this week, some stuff to keep in mind. We're going to be sculpting out our hair, our clothing, and our accessories. For hair, don't just sculpt neutral hair. Um, consider the end product. So you know, think about how your character is going to be posed in the end. And uh, you know, so don't if your character has very very long hair, I wouldn't sculpt that out as like a a neutral long if the hair is going to be flying all over the place in the final version of this. So you know. Uh, you'll you'll kind of have to figure out for yourself how much detail is going to go into your hair this week. Um, you can either sculpt it in pose already or kind of block out a volume. That works pretty well too. The clothing, we of course want to keep that as simple and low res as possible. Uh, that's why I advocate modeling these things in a separate package. Um, single sided surfaces for now because when we get into posing, we want to deal with one side rather than two, and it just makes our life a little easier. And then, of course, construct everything like they would be actually made in real life. It's going to give you a lot of mileage out of your accessories and your clothing, and uh, it's just going to be more convincing and look better. And for clothing in particular, it really helps with uh, doing like UVs if you decide to texture your objects. Accessories, uh, please consider poly modeling these objects in another program unless you have the time or you are very good with ZModeler. All right, just to visually represent the homework, this is uh, more or less where I want you to be for next week. So we've got our hair sculpted as far as we need to take it. Um, if you've got short hair, try and go all the way with your, with your character's hair this week. 
If your hair is long or complex or influenced by the pose in a lot of ways, then you know get the volumetric sculpt in there as much as possible. Remember also that if you're planning on just purely sculpting out your hair and not doing this sort of hair tube workflow, that's absolutely okay. Um, that's totally your choice. But um, you know, as long as your hair looks cool in the end, that's all I really care about. So uh, whichever way you choose to get there is fine by me. For the character's clothing and accessories, I think it would be good to have the accessories completely modeled out this week and then get all of your clothing close to a state that I have mine in this week. So all the pieces are in here. I just need to go in and add the detail and place buttons and stuff like that, and then I'm ready to go. So next week, we're going to finish up the clothing and then move this character into pose. So having all this stuff blocked out and ready to go is going to put you in a good position to do that. All right, so uh, you know it's a lot of stuff to get through this week, but we're getting close to having something cool. Uh, don't worry about coloring anything like I did. I just did it for a show um, and didn't do a great job. So don't worry about that stuff. We will have a whole week where we will color things and make it look very pretty. All right, so good luck this week, and uh, put in the time, and you will reap the benefits. I guess that's true of every week. All right, uh, we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.